Hi everyone, it's MJ the Fellow Actory, and I came across this video last night on Reddit and I thought, you know what? This is actually quite a cool opportunity to try out a React video. So the video is about imaginary interest rates and seeing that I did my fellowship in finance, interest rates are something that I should be quite comfortable with. So let's see what this mathematician has to say about imaginary ones. It's definitely got my interest up, so let's check it out. This is my first time doing a React video, so hopefully I don't stuff it up. Um, so let's, I don't actually even know how to do it. Like, do I just film myself watching this video? Okay, we're gonna hit play and see, see how this turns out. Welcome back to Lockdown Math, where we try to answer some of the important questions in life, some of the deeper things that are relevant push your life forward? Like for example, what if you have a bank that offers you an interest rate of the square root of negative one? A negative, not even a negative interest rate. We thought that was weird enough. An imaginary interest rate. Okay, so I'm gonna hit pause very quickly there. Um, so quick reason why we have negative interest rates, it's essentially because pension fund regulations insist that the majority of a pension fund is invested in high grade quality bonds but because high grade quality bonds are of a limited supply because there's only so much debt a country can raise before that debt starts deteriorating in quality. So because the, the demand is so huge and the supply is fixed, what we actually see happens is bonds can get away with offering negative interest rates if they are of a high enough quality. So that's a very quick introduction on why we're currently experiencing negative interest rates. It's not because there's a, well, I guess it is a problem with, with economics, but essentially it's, it's coming from the fact that pension fund regulation is forcing a demand, and that's why, uh, because there's limited supply, we can go into negative pricing territory. Anyway, let's jump back and see how he's going to play around with imaginary interest rates. Should you take it? Now, I almost guarantee, however interesting you think this question is, it's gonna be more interesting than that. I think there's gonna be some people who find it totally nonsensical, right? Which is reasonable. What on earth would it mean for your money to grow by this? I'm probably, yeah, I'm, I'm probably on the camp where it's gonna be absolutely nonsensical. Uh, but let's see, let's see. Square root of negative one. And I think there's also some people who think they know where this lesson is going. Um, but wherever you sit, I almost guarantee this is going to be more interesting than you think. Um, and to start things off, let me bring back our poll that we were doing, you know, during the warm-up animations. And I just want to get a sense for what your instinct is on this apparently nonsensical question. Okay, so obviously there's no right or wrong answer here. It's something that we're going to answer by the end. Um, but I'm genuinely curious uh, what you, viewing right now, think. If a bank offers you an annual interest rate of the square root of negative one, do you take it? So if you want to participate... Okay, this is an interesting question. I kind of feel like it's 50-50, but my profession is on the line if I get it wrong. Um, I mean, I would answer no, just in the sense that if you don't know, if you don't understand the investment that you're getting yourself into, rather walk away. It's kind of like rule number one. If you don't understand run away. And that comes to any form of structured notes um, or derivative instrument or anything that wants to take your money. If you don't understand it, you run away. Um, however, kind of understanding or seeing how he's trying to set this up, you're probably going to find by taking an imaginary interest rate, you could end up with an infinite amount of money. So there is that chance, but being a risk adverse um, investor, I am going to I would decline the, the opportunity, although after watching this video, if it does make sense and it does go infinite and I have gained that extra information, then I probably would accept if it is beneficial. But at this current state, not knowing is going to make me say no to this investment opportunity. Um, either in this poll or any of the live quizzing that we do throughout, obviously 3b1b.co slash live is where you can go, link in the description as well. Fascinating. We've got a very even split between the yeses and the noes. I wouldn't have guessed that, actually. Sorry, I'm just going to pause there. The people who said yes on this... <laughs> obviously playing with their parents' money and not their own. Um, anyway, sorry, let's, let's see how he reacts to the fact that it's a 50-50 split between the options. Yeah, I'm surprised that... Not more people were like, no. 
Um, specifically being that this is, I think, I think he's got smart subscribers. So let's, anyway, let's see what he has to say. Um, and I'm curious if by the end of this, uh, once we see what the implications would be, how many of you would stand by your answers? So let me just, let me just see what this distribution is because I am curious to know. Okay, I've got another thought. I wonder if, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking out loud too soon, but I wonder if it's gonna be very term specific. So under some terms, it'll give you a lot of money and under some other terms, it'll give like negative, uh, like yeah, so positive affinity, negative infinity. So I wonder if there's gonna be an oscillation in the present value depending on the term. I don't know, that's just, a, that's just a wild thought that I should probably think before I talk, but let's get back to this. All right, so it looks like 1,690, 1,700 of you uh, said yes, you would take the imaginary interest rate. Um, and then uh, 1,645 of you said no. All right, we'll see if you stand by that by the end and which way to really understand the implications of imaginary interest. Now before that, uh, let's ask a question that um, is a little bit more real world because I think we should spend the first, I don't know, half hour of the lesson or so on actual normal compound interest, right? The kind of interest that we would all usually think of. Make sure we can build up some of the math of that. And then once we have the math of that, see how we can tweak it to answer our, well, frankly, silly question. Okay, so as our first... Um... Okay, no, 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 no. I think, I think we can skip that. I think we can skip that. Um, we don't need to go through half an hour of interest rates. We, need, we want to jump to the juicy part. Let's see if there's a thing in his description that says when he jumps to the cool part. Um, and I don't want to read the comments because that might give things away. Uh, in his description, he mentions he made a mistake. Okay, hold on. Let's, I think we can skip the first couple. He's talking about normal interest. Yeah, we can skip that. I mean, of course, if you guys want to go watch the actual video, you can do that. Um, so let's just skip, gosh, oh, the first half an hour, he's talking about normal interest rate. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I see, I see the R negative one popping in. Is it play? So how on earth is this going to work? Uh, first of all, uh, let's just say from the get-go that if we try plugging in R to this expression where we're raising a constant E to a power, it makes no sense um, if R is equal to the square root of negative one. You cannot multiply a constant by itself uh, the square root of negative one times. So that doesn't make sense. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm having like a little bit of a... Didn't Euler have that famous equation where he had E, he had imaginary, I think he even had pi, and it comes to like one or zero, the answer. I think maybe the answer comes to zero. Hold on, sorry, I'm just having, I'm thinking out loud again. So we've gone from it oscillating a lot to now that the, the ultimate answer will be zero. So if you put any money in at a negative interest rate, I'm thinking the, the amount comes down to zero. Okay, this is guess number two, let's continue. But what does is if we go to this original expression, the origins of E, and try to imagine plugging in something like I to that. We know how to divide I by N, that's fine. We know how to add it to one, that's fine. We know how to take a complex number and multiply it by itself. All of the operations there are quite fine. Now let's draw it out to think about what it would look like. And the other thing I want to emphasize is, I know this seems like utter nonsense. We're talking about imaginary numbers in the context of interest rates, but in a couple minutes, I really do hope to make this relevant to physics and hope to make you see that uh, this is not a totally nonsensical circle of thoughts. All right, so if I've got my axes here, where this is going to be my real, <laughs> this is my real money, um, and this will be all of my imaginary money, what it means if your interest rate is i, is that the change to the money looks like i times whatever the time step is, delta t, times whatever the money is to begin with. Now, in uh, I, I believe it was lecture three, we talked all about complex numbers, and one of the fundamental facts was that when you multiply i by something, it has the effect of a 90 degree rotation. Okay, I didn't know that. Now I'm kind of thinking my answer is probably way off. But anyway, let's see. 
I, I remember, gosh, when was the last time I did imaginary numbers? It has been a while. It has been a while. To your money is going to be a little arrow that, you know, it's not increasing the money. You're not growing. You're not decreasing the money. It's not a negative interest rate. It's moving somehow perpendicular to where the money already is. So after a little step in time, you end up uh, with a little bit of imaginary money. So you have what you had originally and you can play Monopoly. And now from that point, when you do another time step, it does the same thing. It takes the vector that you've newly landed on and it rotates it 90 degrees. Okay. And then you take a little step based on that. And then again, you take a little step based on that. Where at each point, you're looking at what is your, your money number that has some real part and some imaginary part. You rotate it 90 degrees and you add a little step on that. And now the question is, what happens to this? This is the original question. The bank offers you this interest rate. What's, what's it going to do? Um, the correct answer, I think, is that you need to ask the bank for more information because how frequently you compound it is going to make a difference. So to illustrate this, let's say you compounded it annually, uh, meaning at the end of every year, you take a big step uh, that's based on this interest rate multiple. So for every dollar that you have, if you started out uh, just putting your real money into the bank, at the end of the year, you would add I times that amount, which is a 90 degree rotation of your money. Again, I know this is utter nonsense, but follow along with me. Uh, one, it's fun, and two, it leads to real physics. So where does that get you? Well, it gets you one dollar plus I dollars. So if you had a hundred dollars in the bank, you end up with a hundred real dollars and a uh, hundred imaginary dollars. But then, after the next year, you take another step, where it takes that new money vector, rotates it 90 degrees, and adds that to where you are. So after two years, you come back to your bank and you say, how's my money doing? And they say, good news, sir, there's twice as much of it. You say, that's fantastic, it's only been two years. And they say, bad news, it's all imaginary. So very good for your Monopoly game, not great for life logistics. But it gets worse. As you wait more time, and you add another 90 degree rotation of where you currently are, you're going to step... Ah, see, there was that thought of it going back to, to zero. Um... It's okay. I, I wasn't thinking about imaginary money. I mean, we've spoken enough about Bitcoin and crypto on this channel, so we should have we should have been thinking about some imaginary things. Um, but yes, I'm not I'm not surprised by by that um, that you would go back to zero. Um, and I think when you start doing it continuously, because that's 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 where we want to get to compounding. When you start compounding it continuously. I think we're going to I think we're going to stick with zero real money. There's going to be zero real money or it's it's going to almost start oscillating between negative 1 and 1 and at certain periods we're going to have z we're going to have one real money and zero um imaginary money. Then we're going to get to a point where we have one imaginary money and zero real money. Then we're going to get to a stage where we have negative 1 uh real money and zero imaginary. Then we're also going to get to a stage where we have zero real money and minus one imaginary money. So we're going to start almost going around that circle when it's continuous. And like I say, it's okay. So this is this is interesting. It's it is. I think we're gonna. I think it's my two guesses coming together. I think it is going to be the oscillating of going up and down, up and down. And I think we are going to have moments where it's going to be zero as well. Um, it's interesting, I was thinking just linearly or in the one dimension of just normal money, um, having him map it out with the imaginary money is something I didn't, I didn't think of initially. But okay, this is, I think, I think I'm on the right track. I think I'm on the right track. Let's see what happens. Into the negative real territory. So at this point, now you have negative 200 real dollars, but you still have that uh, 200 imaginary, uh, imaginary dollars. So good for your Monopoly game, devastating now for your actual life. But it gets worse. As we take another step, four years later, after you've invested your hard-earned money, you've not even invested, you weren't even putting it at risk. It was just a savings account. And where do you end up? For every dollar you put in, you would now have negative four dollars. So you come to the bank and they say, well, you owe us four hundred dollars for the one hundred dollars that you put in four years ago. And just as you're about to get outraged at them, they say, sir, we encourage you to wait.
we really do think this is going to work out for you. If you just let your money sit, do its work, and uh, in the long run this will work out for you. And they're not entirely wrong, because if you keep playing this game of rotating 90 degrees and then adding that vector, after a total of 8 years, where you're going to end up is at 16 times your original amount. Not too bad. So if you're willing to put up with a lot of stress going in, changing your Monopoly game, changing your real life, and you were willing to just hold for eight total years. Okay, so when you're compounding annually, there is that oscillation of negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Um, like I say, I'm interested to see what happens when he makes the compounding continuously, because then I think it is going to wrap around in a circle. Although, this is the thing about compounding. I mean, I'm not surprised that it is growing. I do kind of feel a little bit dumb that I didn't see that first. Um, but yeah, it, it's interesting. It's going to create this, this spiral, spiral-like pattern. Um, I don't know. I'm, I was confident. Now I'm thinking, now I'm trying to think a little bit more, but let's, let's keep playing the video. You would have 16 times as much. So that's pretty good, I would say. We might call this the, um, the venture capitalist approach, where you put in your money, you can't see it for a long time, and uh, most of the time it's completely imaginary, uh, but every now and then you get a giant multiple at the end. Now before you excitedly do this though, let's say that your bank doesn't compound it annually, right? And they say, ah, actually we compound your interest continuously. Meaning that our time steps are not delta t of one year, but it's delta t getting smaller and smaller. Well, what that means is that each one of your steps that's perpendicular to where you are is really just a tiny little step. Okay, this is the interesting one. This is the interesting one. Um, honestly, do I want to change my, change my view on... Is it going to oscillate between 1 and 0? Oh, it's... Uh, it's weird. Like, so the idea of compounding is that you do grow, it does expand. But... I don't know, I've got that Euler's equation in the back of my head where he combined E, he combined pi, and he combined negative one, and I think he got zero. So, yeah, let's, let's, let's just play it out. And I'm showing with the arrows here what happens if you wait eight total oh, years. Wait, wait, wait. So you take a tiny step that's perpendicular to where you are, another tiny step that's perpendicular to where you are, and you keep going. <laughs> but as that time step gets smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller, to the point where it's genuinely continuously Holland. compounding interest. Holland, did we just get that right? And I, by mistake, instead of clicking pause, I clicked all the way back to the beginning. I think we were on 38. Hold on. I got very excited and I was like push the back button instead of the play button. Um, let's just click play, let them catch up. What it means is that you're simply walking around a circle. So if you were writing this out as an expression, you know, it might seem halfway reasonable to look at the fact that we were using e to the x as a shorthand for this limiting value here. And in the case of real numbers, that makes total sense when we plug in a value for x. Um, but what it means here is with our imaginary money, we're writing it as e to the i, that was our interest rate, times the amount of time. Nonsense if we think about repeated multiplication, but in the context of compounding interest, all it really means is that after taking a bunch of steps that are perpendicular to your current position, and we do that continuously, so those time steps are just infinitesimal, it has you walking around a circle. So, the bank offers you this. Do you take it? Well, let's think it through. <laughs> what happens when you put in $100 to your savings account? Well, if you wait a total of pi halves years... Wait, he's going to bring in pi, and then the, the expected value is zero of everything. It will be the center of the circle. Yeah, the answer is going to be zero. The expected value of this is zero. So it, it is a dumb thing to do if you're compounding continuously which is the um, distance along a quarter of a circle, a little over a year and a half, you come back into your account and what do you see? Well, for each dollar you put in, you have an imaginary dollar. Not great. 
but you push, push through, you know, the banker told you that this will work out in the end. So you say, okay, I'm going to wait. I, don't, I didn't need it for that year and a half. Um, life wasn't going too terribly. So I'm just going to let my money still sit in that savings account for another uh, year and a half or so. And you wait a total of pi years, around 3.14 years. You come back and now it really doesn't look good. Now you've got negative $1 for each dollar that you originally put in. And just like before, you're infuriated at the bank, not as much as you were because it hasn't gone out to be negative four, but it's still negative and that's not fun. And the bank says, hold on, hold on, sir. We think this is actually gonna work out for you in the end. And you say, okay, I've, I've seen this work out for my friends who got 16 times their money, so I'll just hold. And you do, you just don't touch the money in your savings account. You wait another year and a half and you check. And now, not only is it entirely imaginary, it's negative. So you can't live your real life and you also can't even play Monopoly well. So 4.7 years is a real low during this whole experience. But if you're willing to stick it out and wait a total of 6.28 years, two pi years, you come back and for all of your stress, you're back to where you started. You just have $1 for every dollar that you put in originally. So should you accept this interest rate from your bank? Depends on how much emotional turmoil you want. But if it's continuously compounding, certainly not, yeah. I think is the appropriate answer. Yeah. Cool, we agree on that. Now, is this at all useful? Which, hold on, which means our original guess of, and this is the thing about finance, if someone offers you something that you cannot understand, walk away because it, it quite likely is going to be a scam. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. Most people in... in uh, I don't want to say most people in finance. Um, I want to say most people who are offering confusing investments are doing it so that they can gain. They're taking advantage of that information asymmetry. So the right choice was to say no. So 50% of people who said yes to that, I mean, um, I'm excited about that we got the continuous one. We figured that one out. I, I don't know. We didn't, we, we kind of thought there was the oscillation, but anyway, let's, let's finish it off. This is kind of fun, I think, to take an idea that started off only relevant to real numbers, you know, a 12% interest rate, um, or if you have negative interest rates, you can think of how that decays and say, well, what if we did something else to it? What if each time step wasn't in the direction, but it was perpendicular to the direction? And the answer is that this is actually incredibly relevant to anything that involves um, what's called simple harmonic motion in physics. And so a great example of this is a spring. Uh, let's say we want, wanted to understand the motion of a spring. Okay, I think, I don't know. There's still like another 20 minutes to this video. Let me just quickly stream through it. I think, let me just jump ahead, see if he's talking about physics. Yeah, I think he's talking about physics. So, I mean, if you guys want to watch the actual video, um, I'll put a link in the description. You can go check it out. Um, cause yeah, I think he's going to go talk about something else. I haven't seen the rest of it, but, um, this video has already like gone on to 25 minutes. So let's maybe, maybe nip this one in the bud, but yeah, at the end of the day, it was an interesting idea. I'd never thought to do negative interest rates. I'd never thought even imagined that. Um, sorry, that's, that's a horrible pun. We should edit that out, edit that out. It's like, you can use interesting, imagined, so many ones. Um, but yeah, just to, I guess, yeah, just to conclude this video, um, the big lesson is, of course, if you don't understand an investment, you walk away. The imaginary interest rate, um, yeah, I, it, it was weird how I first thought there was gonna be that oscillation because interest rates do grow over time. And the fact that it's imaginary, it's the square root of uh, minus one, it means when it's being squared, it's going to be negative one and there's going to be the negative amount. But when you square that again, it becomes positive. So that's where my oscillation came idea came from, was the fact that it would go from minus one to one, you know, you, when you just keep squaring it and that's kind of what you're getting with, with interest rates. Then the thing that helped me figure out that the expected value would be zero because, and we saw when it goes around in that circle, um, you'll see sometimes you're at positive one, sometimes you're at negative one, sometimes you're at positive imaginary, sometimes you're at negative imaginary, but the expected value or the average of all of those is gonna be right in the center, it's zero. The reason why I was able to, to know that is because of Euler's equation. I think if I wasn't 
if I hadn't read that, I think, when did I read that? Like last week or two weeks ago. If I hadn't read that, I probably, probably would not have thought, uh, that probably would not have come to my mind. Um, but at the end of the day, it's quite a cool video. Um, I see he's got quite a lot of videos, this guy. Three blue, one brown. I don't know what that's a reference to. Maybe that's his eye colors. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if there's any other videos that you think are interesting from an actuarial point of view that you would like to see me react to, let me know in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, maybe if you guys like this video, we'll, we'll do another one. But keep well, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.